been muted. Now I can go over again. Um, we have uh, individuals, in, one individual inside the church running the online portion, and then the rest of us are out here outside. So that's why the back and forth. But, uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and go into the message portion. We'll go ahead and go, you know, this being the first Sabbath of 2021, I've elected to interrupt our current service, series, which is on Genesis, a few weeks, uh, and return back to it, in fact, in eight weeks. And, you know, a lot can happen in one day. In one day in this world, 365,000 babies are born. In one day, 8.6 million lightning strikes happen. And each person on Earth will laugh 15 times a day, on, on average, and uh, more if they hear George jokes. And then, so, um, and our hearts will be, there will be 104,000 beats uh, in a day's time. So yes, a lot can happen in one day. Those of you who remember maybe the TV show or the series 24, that's why it was so popular because so much can be packed into one day. Our message today is called Win the Day. And it's the start of a series of the same name. It's based on a new book that's out by Mark Batterson. Uh, Batterson's the author of Chase the Lion, Circle Maker, and it's a great series to start up, start up for New Year. You know, by the end of January, 75% of people who made New Year's resolutions will not be keeping. When you think of things in a one-year time frame, the finish is so far off, you can't even see it. You can't even imagine yourself actually completing. And so yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. What we need to focus on is today. And that's what this series is all about. Imagine how much better your life would be if instead of obsessing over the past or worrying about the future, you just set out with today to win this day, but every day. Almost anybody can accomplish almost anything if they work at it long enough, hard enough, and smart enough. You know, in 1871, a 21-year-old medical student read one sentence that would change the entire trajectory of his life. At the time, the pressure of final exams and the prospect of starting a medical practice led to a nervous breakdown or near to it. But William Osler was destined to become the most famous medical doctor of his generation. He would organize the John Hopkins School of Medicine, establish the first residency program for specialty training, and write the predominant fact he would even be knighted Sir William by the King of England. Of course, Osler knew none of this when he was 21 years old. Well, by what he felt was like the weight of the world. That's when 22 words written by a Scottish historian, Thomas Carlyle, changed everything. These are those 20, 21 words, 22 words. Our grand business undoubtedly is not to see what lies dimly at a distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand. 42 years later, Sir William Osler delivered an address at Yale University. Despite his distinguished credentials, Osler professed intellectual averageness, if you will. His success, he said, was not the byproduct of innate intelligence or or natural talent. So what then could explain his success? Osler traced it back to the 22 words that altered his outlook on life. He took those words, do what lies clearly at hand, and put his own fingerprints on them. Reflecting on his own insecurities and own uncertainties, Osler issued a timeless challenge to the students that day at Yale University, day size compartments. What do you mean by that? The load of tomorrow, said Osler, added to that of yesterday, carries way too much to make even the strongest fall to the knees. It's true, isn't it? We, we feel overwhelmed by yesterday's mistakes and underqualified for tomorrow's opportunities and challenge. We feel so overwhelmed and unqualified that we're tempted to quit before we even begin. And that's what many people do. Their lives are over before they even begin. They stop living and they start dying. More than a century later now, Osler's words still ring true. In a day of endless distractions and an age of ceaseless change, they reign truer now more than ever. So many people are so overwhelmed by so many things. We're paralyzed by things we cannot change, the things in the past. We're, we're crippled by the things we can't control, the things that are coming up in our future. The solution, Osler's advice, his age-old advice is a good place to start as any, let go of dead yesterdays and the unborn tomorrows. The secret to a success is the solution to a thousand problems, a thousand of our own problems. Instead of fixating on things, things that lie dimly at the distance, concentrate on what lies clearly at hand. If yesterday is history and tomorrow is mystery, then win today. When you win today, tomorrow takes care of itself. Do that enough days in a row and you can accomplish almost anything. 
how do you win the day? Well, for starters, you have to define what it means to win. What's important right now? Then you identify the, the lead measures that will produce the results that you want. Even if you can't see yourself doing them down the line, look at what is required to get you there. Establish daily rituals that will make your life even more meaningful. Break bad habits by establishing good habits in place and replace them. Then stack those good habits in a way that will pay dividends down the road. Over the next few weeks, we're going to unpack some of these new ideas, new habits to put into our life and many more. A few months before delivering his address, William Osler had crossed the Atlantic on an ocean liner. And while standing on the bridge of that ship, he added his aha moment. The captain was demonstrating the latest and greatest in maritime technology at that point. He pressed a button that shifted gears, turning part of that ship into watertight compartments. Leveraging that machinery as, as a metaphor for life, Osler likened each of us to an ocean liner on a long voyage. What I urge is that you so learn to control your own machinery as to live within daytight compartments. Touch a button, and here at every level of your life, the iron door shutting out the past behind you, the dead yesterdays. And on touch another and shut off with a metal curtain the future, the unborn tomorrow. This series is all about pressing that button and unleashing the power of just 24 hours, a simple power within 24 hours. Burying to, uh, dead yesterdays can be as difficult as a graveside funeral. And imagining unborn tomorrows involves no less later than childhood. But if you want to win the day, there's no other way of doing it. But it's not about just living another day. It's all about living in the day. Here's what I mean. While teaching at the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Tony Campolo once turned an ordinary lecture into an unforgettable lesson for his students. He asked an unsuspecting student sitting in the front row, Young man, how long have you lived? And then that student answered his age. And Tony responded, no, 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 no. That's how long your heart has been pumping blood. What I want to know is how long have you lived? He then told the class about one of the most memorable moments of his entire life. In, the, in 1944, his fourth grade class took a field trip to the top of the Empire State Building, the tallest building in the world at the time. When nine-year-old Tony got off the elevator, stepped onto the observation deck overlooking New York City, Time stood still for him. He said, if I live a million more years, that moment will still be a part of my consciousness because I was fully alive when I lived it. Tony turned back to the students. Now let me ask you again, how long have you lived? And the student that he asked sheepishly responded, well, when you say it that way, maybe an hour, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. So how long have you lived? Is my question for all of us today. I mean, really lived. It's easy. Calculating age is more difficult quantifying than quantifying it. Because time is measured in minutes, while life is measured in moments. What are those top of the Empire State Building moments for you? For most of us, they're too few and they're far between. When was the last time time stood still for you? And if you turn those moments into minutes, how long have you been? You know, according to psychologists, the average person spends 47% uh, of their time thinking about something other than what they're doing at the very moment, which means we're half present half the time, which means we're only half present. The only way to be fully alive, to be fully present where you need to be, and the only way to be fully present is to live in day-sized compartments. For far too many of us, like, life feels like the meaningless passage of time between far too and few meaningful. And even when they do come along, we take selfies instead of being fully present in the moment. We miss the moment because we're living in the wrong time zone. We're so fixated on the past and so anxious about our future that we miss the present. And then we wonder where, where life is. Long before digital clocks and counting, an ancient poet wrote this in Psalm 90, verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. What does it mean to win the day? It's like living each day is the first day and the last day of your life, which is both an art and a science. Together over the next seven weeks, we're going to look at seven habits designed to help us win the day. To be fair, this process will not be easy and it won't happen overnight. But if you put these seven habits and others, but these seven habits into practice, you're learning how to stress less and accomplish more. You'll win a lot more days than you do. And that's a good goal. First, we're going to look how to bury our dead yesterday. You know, memory is both a blessing and a curse. Without it, we have to relearn everything every day. The challenge, of course, is remembering correctly. 
We have a tendency to remember what we should forget and forget what we should remember. If you want God to do something new, you can't keep doing the same old thing. So our first week, we'll be talking about flip the script. If you want to change your life, start by changing your life story. The second is to kiss the way. The obstacle is not the enemy. The obstacle is the way. To... Then we'll turn the page on the past and then the present. Tomorrow may be a mystery, mystery, but destiny is not. Destiny is a daily decision. Over time, those daily decisions yield compound interest. But if you do the right things day in and day out, God is going to show up. And he's going to show off for you. I can't tell you when or where or how, but I can tell you it will be there. It will be on his terms and his timeline. The good news, you're always only one decision away from a totally different life than you had just yesterday. The next two habits will help you make the right pre-decisions and establish the right rituals in your life. The third one's called eat the frog. And if you want God to do the super, then you've got to do the natural. Hopefully these titles will mean something when you get to these three. Number four, fly the kite. How do you do anything or how you do anything is how you'll do everything. And finally, we'll imagine unborn tomorrows. You know, show me the size of your dream and I'll show you the size of your job. If you're going to dream big, you've got to think long. The next two habits will help you take the right risk and play the long game together. Number five is cut the rope. Playing it safe is risky. And number six is wind the clock. Time is measured in minutes. Life is measured in moments. And the last habit will show us how to seed the clouds. To sow today what you want to see tomorrow. Seven habits, seven daily habits which can transform your perspective of a single day, and you'll discover the potential waiting to be grasped at the beginning of each new morning. You are here for such a time as this. You are here for such a place as this. It's time to live that way. The trick is to learn like you'll live forever, but to live like there's no tomorrow. Psalm 90, 12 again, teaches us to realize the breath of life. <coughs> An old children's joke asks, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. It's how you accomplish anything. We need to tackle one habit at a time. If we try to make too many changes at the same time, the chance of success goes down. Each week, we're going to pick a habit. We're going to go over it. We're going to work at it together. And then after the series is over, I hope we'll decide to continue those habits in our lives. And it's NFL Hall of Famer Emmett Smith holds the NFL record for what? Did anyone know? For the all time rushing yards, 18,355. That adds up to 10.4 miles if you put it all together. And, and that's with 300 pound defensive tackles dropping into the ground every four feeders. And yet, how did he do it? How did he become the top record holder? Well, he, he shares he has two secrets. Number one, he plays one game at a time, one play at a time, one yard at a time. And that's good advice and counsel. We're going to focus the, the uh, end of our day today with secret number two. He calls it the 24-hour rule. See, win or lose, Emmett gave himself a 24-hour window to either celebrate the win or to lament his loss. But just 24 hours. When that 24 hours is over, then he's on to the next day's activities and he tries to forget the past and move forward. Sounds a lot, uh, a lot like Osler's uh, time, day, day tight compartments, doesn't it? Next day for Emmett, it was back to business, back to basics. What if we, what if you and I were to apply those 24-hour rules to all of life? Don't you think we'd gain a lot more yardage and win a lot more days? Those secrets are all cool, but they're not new by any stretch of imagination. The 24-hour rule, for example, is the centerpiece of probably the most famous prayer of all time. We call it the, the Lord's Prayer. Even those who aren't religious recognize it when they hear it, perhaps have even prayed it. And if you look at your screen there in Matthew 6, verse 9, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See, Osler was the son of a pastor and he knew it very well. And in his address, Osler challenged the Yale students to pray that piece of the Lord's Prayer every day. And he knew that praying it every day was much easier said than done. Can I tell you what I wish it said? I, I wish it said, give us this week our weekly bread. Or, or give us this year our entire year's worth of bread. Right? That'd be so much easier. We wouldn't have to bug God. We wouldn't have to depend on God every day. But that, of course, is the whole point of prayer. 
to connect with God and depend on him. The Lord's Prayer is three-dimensional. It helps us to nullify past mistakes, to navigate present circumstances, and to negotiate our future challenges. Jesus prayed there in that prayer and in the past tense. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. You cannot change the past, but you can leverage the lessons that you gained from that. Jesus also prayed in the future tense. He said, lead us not into temptation. You cannot control your future, but you can make decisions today that will pay dividends tomorrow. And finally, Jesus prayed in the present tense, give us this day our daily bread. If you happen to remember from scripture, you got a couple of one and young ones. If you happen to remember the expiration date on manna, how long did it last? In Exodus 16, verse 19, then Moses told them, do not keep any of it until morning. But some of them didn't listen, kept some of it till morning. By then it was full of maggots and had a terrible smell, and Moses was very angry with them. One day, that's the expiration date of manna. How about the deadline on anger? Ephesians 4, 26, and don't let sin uh, take control by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. When are God's mercies made new? Lamentations 3, verse 22, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. How often are we told to take up our crosses? Luke 9, verse 23, then he said to the crowd, if any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. When are we told to rejoice to be glad? Psalm 118, 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This 24-hour rules everywhere you look. In fact, it's as old as day one. Genesis chapter one, verse five says, God called the light day and the darkness night and evening passed and morning came and that marked the first day. Everything is based on a 24-hour time. Remember Tony Campolo's unforgettable moment atop the Empire State Building? Well, if I were to live a million more years, I have so many. Obviously, by the color of my hair, you can probably tell that I've been here a while. And there are so many things. When I got married to my wife, when I was there at the birth of each of my four children, now, all of these things are exciting. The one that comes to mind, that came to mind for this message, was it when um, Elizabeth, my youngest, was in fourth grade. Well, in fourth grade in California, we study state history. So we study the history of California. But because we homeschool, which is now what everybody's doing, but back then it was kind of unique to homeschool, because we were homeschooled, we could take and do this right. And so we actually um, took our, our uh, vehicle and stuffed it full of uh, luggage. And we took the whole family. Uh, Matthew was uh, in Michigan, I believe, as a uh, interim pastor back there, or a uh, pastor and intern. But, uh, but the rest of us, we went on this trip. And we saw all 21 of the, men, of the uh, California missions. We started in San Diego, worked our way up the coast. And uh, it took all of the week to go up the coast, over to Sacramento, where we, where we went to the capital. And a friend of mine, uh, who was the Senate uh, whip at the time, uh, state Senate whip, showed us a tour of the Capitol and, and his offices. And then we went over to uh, Reno, Nevada, and straight down back home. Seven days, it was great. It was an opportunity to, to, to merge with my kids. And that will be a part of my consciousness forever. What is your top of the Empire State moment? You know, the LA Dream Center has helped tens of thousands of people who find themselves at the end of their ropes. Many of them are trying to overcome life controlling addictions or rebuild their broken lives. But no matter what habits they're trying to break or what goals they're going after, the staff at the LA Dream Center are trained to ask this one simple question. Can you do it for one day? There's a simple kind of genius to that question. Genius? Well, think about this. Why do so many of our problems why do so many of our bad habits remain unbroken? Why do so many of our goals remain unachieved? Nine times out of 10, we're so overwhelmed by the size of the problem or the new habit or the goal that we give up before we even get started. We gain a lot more ground if we focused on habits rather than goals and did so one day at a time. Why is that question so simple? Because anyone can do anything for a day. I ask you this, do you think you can do a difficult thing for a week? Probably, if you had to do it and put yourself to it. Do you think you could do that, that difficult thing for a month? Maybe. Do you think you could do a difficult thing for a year? I'm not so sure I could say yes to that. How about the rest of my life? But see, you can do it for a day. I know I can. 
I know you can too, the odds of success get greater as the time compartment gets smaller, don't they? If you get it down to date type compartments, again, anything is possible. And God excels in the anything. I have no idea what problems you're trying to solve, what habits you might be trying to break or build, or what God-sized goal you're actually going after. I'm not sure how you define the win, but I know the secret to your success. It was the same for William Austin. It's the same for Emmett Smith. You've got to win the day that is right there in front of you. Think of it this way. If you can do it one day and then a second day, what have you got? you got a winning streak, right? you got a streak of two, and you just keep on going day by day. Here's your homework for the next week. Before when we come back next week, I ask you to think about this. Identify a habit that you'd like to rock in your life, get it going in your life, or a goal that you were trying to attain. And finish that up with a simple question. You guys know what's coming, right? Can you do it for a day? I know you can. All you have to do is live in day-type compartments. As we begin 2020, it's time to unleash the power of 24 hours. Let us start.